going on YouTube Steve I'm back I'm gonna do a video on what I think the biggest mistakes are for the discus keeper the baddest choice that a discus keeper can make but before I do that I want to give a shout out to my man Paul Madfish this guy has one of the cleanest discus tanks I have ever seen it's huge my house I don't have the size you know I don't have the room to be able to have that size of a discus tank but if I did have one I'll tell you what I'd model it after this guy's tank. This guy's videos are awesome, and his tank is awesome. Paul Madfish, go to your channel page. Go check out this guy's stuff. Awesome looking tanks, man. Got to check that out. Paul, what's up, man? Okay, what's going on, YouTube? I'm going to give you my number one mistake that you can make in this hobby. Not just with discus, but in this hobby, period. And that is where you buy your fish from. If you're looking at fish and you have a local pet store, make sure that the fish are not on a centralized filtering, centralized water system. There is no telling uh, what type of pathogens, what type of bacteria, you know, if, what if there's flukes, if there's protozoan bacteria that are in that water that are you know, bouncing from tank to tank. There's no telling what those fish are exposed to. And the worst thing that you could do to yourself starting out in this hobby is to uh, is, is, is to get yourself a bad fish. There's a lot of other things that you can do to make adjustments for, you know, there's ongoing debates about gravel, about plants, if I can start them out like this, do I have to start them out in the bare bottom, you know, what type of food do I need, you know, pH and KH and GH and all this stuff, you know, your fish, they have time to show you when something's not right. But if you're starting out with a bad fish, you know, that's already been exposed to, to, to a bunch of different pathogens, then you know what, that's just going to frustrate you as a hobbyist. That's going to hurt your pocketbook because you're trying to save them. And that's going to take up a lot of your time when you're trying to research to find out answers as to what is exactly wrong with the fish that you bought. And don't go and buy them from a, from a chain store. You know, they're on centralized water systems, you know, in horrible conditions. The tanks are too small. And they can tell you, oh, yeah, we're, we have, we're on a sump in this and that. I'll tell you what, the number one cause of flagellates inside of, inside of soft water cichlids is cramped quarters. It doesn't matter how much water volume they have. Cramped quarters causes stress, and stress allows the protozoan bacteria, aka flagellates, to be able to get out of the gas, uh, the uh, gastrointestinal uh, uh, tract, and to be able to get all the way up into their brain. So don't start out with a fish from any place that is on the centralized water system. If they can't guarantee you that they have been treating their tank and that they've been treating their fish, um, then don't do it. If you're going to get them from a local pet store, make sure that the fish that you're getting are coming from an individually filtered system. And you'll know when people, you know, when people care. My recommendation, get them from... A breeder get them from an established breeder who takes the time to you know treat and medicate their tanks properly and this way you know and you're assured that you're getting yourself a good fish the worst thing that you can do is start out with a bad fish that's my advice that's the biggest mistake I think that people make starting out in this hobby is getting the starting out with a bad fish everything else can be accounted for starting out with a bad fish really can't thanks for watching guys